Ce programme vous est offert par UBA, Africa's Global Bank. Welcome to another episode of Amazing Women, Femme d'Exception. Today I'm particularly excited because this chat is going to be in English as suggested by my guest. But before you know who she is, a little recap. The cultural stereotypes in Africa limit a woman to being a mother, a wife, and very little is said about her career development. But on this show, we deliver to you the best of African women who have fought through the challenges and stand out as leading women in their respective roles. Today, very rare, a lady in construction, she is Mrs. Thessa Dishler Ketcher. Thanks for joining us on Amazing Woman. Thanks for letting me in. Uh, you look gorgeous. Behind the scenes, when I spoke to this lady and she said to me she's got three kids, I was like, mm, I don't believe this. But her secret, I'm going to tell you, she goes to the gym and she exercises. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about construction, this is a field where a lot of women do not dare. How did you get into this? Uh, well, I'm a civil engineer by training. And I would say I was... I went there because of my dad, because he was a geotechnical and he had a construction company. So mm -hmm. at home, it was kind of a lifestyle yeah. to, to do st uh, sci scientific studies. It was a lifestyle. So I don't know if that's led me to become an engineer or it's because I had some abilities. But at the end of the day, I did uh, these scientific studies and I went into an engineering school as almost everyone in my house, my, my siblings, because it was like that said, you are going to do, the, do so. And we yeah. did so. <laughs> Now, talking about construction, you mentioned earlier that you deal with eco-friendly materials during your construction. In an environment like this in Africa, how do you push through to introduce innovation? Hmm. So when I talk about eco-friendly houses, people usually say, oh, this is not for us. We, we have so many issues to deal with. So why do, why do you insist in eco-friendly houses? So as I said, um, uh, climate change with, will hit Africa like more than in the other countries because yeah. we don't have the mitigation measures, we don't have the adaptation means, and we need to take care of that before the others do. Uh, it's like I said, it's like the pandemic, it hit somewhere else, but we were touched because we didn't have the, way, the means to, to deal with it. Yeah. So now I'm just coming with this idea that um, climate change will um, provoke a lot of, uh, of uh, consequences in Africa, especially yeah. regarding uh, heat and uh, there will be more heat related fatalities in houses so this is how i try to explain to people you need to change the way you live you need to change the houses in which you live to have better comfort that will prevent you from all the diseases and the fatalities related to heat and it's very difficult to to uh, have it understood but well i've been trying for four years and i won't mm -hmm. give up because i know it's the way to go now it must be fairly challenging because that like many other sectors you know uh, it's dominated by men how do you stand firm when you're faced with all these guys? Uh, I never think I'm a woman because I would say I was raised by a tough dad who always told me that if you can do it, no, it's no, 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 no matter you, you, la you're a lady, you're a girl, you, I've never thought of yeah. myself as a woman. I'm, I'm thinking of myself as a good engineer and that I've been trained really well and I've been mentored very well by my dad who yeah. was a hardworking guy. Uh, looking after the details so this is how I was I was raised I was educated so I really don't think about that and I am tough um, there was a comparison with that which I didn't like when I was a, was younger I was called Margaret Thatcher saying that I was kind of oh tough. yes like uh, you fight yes. for everything so I fight for everything and uh, I think I don't let myself influence or and I never give up and uh, I give a lot of importance um, to my training and my you know, my knowledge so that when I talk to you about uh, technical aspects or mm -hmm. competence, you have nothing to say. Yes. So the conversation, well, it cannot change because we are on a serious matter mm -hmm. and 
I, I like to challenge my, uh, the person which we, with whom I'm talking, so there is no way you can derive from the conversation, you know. Now, it must have been an amazing blessing to have a dad who supports you into being a full-fledged woman, especially when you're getting in a field with so many men, and he knows definitely the challenges you face. A lot of women do have that problem, mm -hmm. and for most of them, the difference is they don't have that support. Yes. Uh, how would you advise a young woman to deal with such a situation if she doesn't have the support like you did? Yes, you're right. It's very important, and I would say here that the support of dads in our African societies are more important than those of the, the mother because the, that, the, the whole society is like men oriented. So mm -hmm. when a man talks, people listen. Yes. And my dad said, my, all my daughters would be engineers. So he supported. And even in front of my mom, he would say sometimes, no, 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 they won't go into the kitchen. They have to work on their books. They have yes. to do their studies. And yes, that was a great support. And I know that it's not the same. It's not the case for all the, the young girls out there. So I founded an association which is called Women in Construction because I know that there is a challenge there and that people run away or girls run away from that type of job because there is no support. So it's a network where we want to support all the, la the young girls mm -hmm. to go into that field because there is, there is a lot of job that will be created yes. there. There, was, there is money to do there. So why would we let that part to men because they said it's their field. It's not their field. It's a field where if you can do it like any other field, you do it. Mm -hmm. So the, in, the, in the association, we want to mentor, we want to find um, you know, training for, for young girls in school so that if they have a good training, they might consider going into that field of work because the lack of finding women in um, high spheres in construction is because they don't do it from the beginning. So we have to support girls mm -hmm. from the beginning in, in saying that it's possible for you to do so and uh, with the association we do that and I also do that in my company because when I founded the company it was clear that I was like gender oriented yeah. so I give advantage to women when I, uh, I uh, <laughs> yes when I, I, I was actually going to ask yes. how you deal with if you give any preferences to yes, the ladies definitely yes our is, that, is that not a bit biased though no because uh, there are, you know yeah that will be a cliche if I say that women have a more rigor you yeah. know we we are like that and as an engineer it's very important to have this scientific rigor it's very important and you find that in the, uh, with the young young engineers they mm -hmm. are so when you say we go like that they will go like that i think even more than men so having them in the manage management is i think more um i find it i find it better for work so we do so i i give this advantage but not only we also create an environment where it, uh, all ladies can speak. You can say, yeah. I want to do this. I know that I did and I succeeded in doing it. So I know that they, if I could do it, other girls could do it. So we, we let the environment like that so they can express themselves and they can. And for, uh, as I said from the beginning, I found it like that. Our, um, how do you say, a mascot is a girl, is a la, uh, Zinga, which is, was the last queen of yeah. uh, Africa. Because by saying so, I'm stating that women can uh, do great in this uh, industry and that we can do great things the same way as this qu Queen Zinga did. So um, the whole company is like that. We hire many ladies. We have a customer segment which is ladies. Yeah. So we, we build for ladies. We, we just say to ladies, you can come to us. You can be comfortable uh, coming to us with your project. We can accompany you. We can help you. We can hold your hand and you will be uh, uh, surrounded by other ladies that have uh, crossed the bias yeah. and did things that they were not supposed to do. So if you have a huge project, which women don't dare to do, a construction project, we can take you there, you can do it, because it's not only for men. Mm -hmm. As we are engin women engineers, you can also be a women investor in uh, real estate and construction and whatever. Yeah. So the whole company is with this um, kind of uh, orientation, not saying that I'm giving uh, advantage without competence. Of we course. work on competence, but uh, competence is in <laughs> women and men. So I don't see why people would say, oh, it's a bias. Yes, if, if you can find competent men, you can also find competent women. I just uh, dig a little more to find those competent women. What That's if it. you find a lady who's extremely competent, but she's not, she doesn't have enough self-esteem? Because one of the cultural stereotypes is beauty without brains, beauty with brains. As soon as they see you well presented, made up, <laughs> you attacked one of those who cannot achieve much. No, so what, how do you handle situations when you find a woman who has the competences, but doesn't have the self-esteem to go with the job? It's almost... All, all the time the case like in 10 young girls or women young women you will find 
um, eight would not have the self-esteem, not because they don't, they, they're not strong, because we were raised like that. Yeah. The society raised you like, you shouldn't talk, you don't, shouldn't say hi, you shouldn't talk hi, it's not your field, so you shouldn't express yourself. It's always, and unfortunately I'm sad because there are some who give up because they say it's too difficult to deal with, yeah. I can't stay. And I'm always sad, but you know, that's why I try to, to train from, you know, from the training course, from uh, the stage, we take them and we say, you can do it, we've done it, so you are going to do it. And we fight from the beginning to, to grow that. And I'm yeah. so happy now because some young girls call me, they, they contact me by Facebook and say, oh, I've seen what you do and I want to do like you. Mm -hmm. Like now I, I have two trainees who came to the company because I was a lady, because they oh. saw what I was doing and they said they're in engineering school. And they said, we want to do what you are doing, we want to become like you. So. I guess that it's just a message to send and it's just to never give up and if we have a little group that starts, then some other are going to follow and to, you know, to build that self-esteem that yeah. is not built during the, when they are raised very young. So with the company, with the association that we are trying to grow, I believe that we can, we can build this self-esteem among ladies, which is the, I, the biggest problem, I would say, not yeah. their competence, is the self-esteem. The self-esteem. Because the society said it has to exactly. be like that. Exactly, because other to. people said that should. Yes, I, I know, because when I have this, my red hair, people look <laughs> at me, <laughs> which kind of engineer with this red, exactly. hair, red hair and this makeup? Exactly. Ah, yes. So that's yeah. why you, ha you, you need to fight to be more competent and have these technical skills, because yes. if you want to be looked nice, to look nice, then you have to... To, to be able to afford for it, us, yes. yes. For us, unfortunately, we have to, if you want to be nice, you have to afford it and work a little bit harder. Yeah. And I accept it for the moment, so if I don't want it to last, I have to train all the young girls to be even better than me. And this is why I, what I'm trying to do. Yeah, <laughs> Definitely, giving up is not an option. My question is, if you give up, what are you going to do? <laughs> On that note, we'll catch a little break and we'll be right back. Say everything cool and nice. Me go on high, see me feel like me spliff up Me and me melody na break up Every time me wake up Me tell me say, see me na give up Say me get a revelation This song is a confirmation We bringing it to everyone Hey guys, have you already met Leo, my virtual banker? Trust me guys, he is super amazing He helps check your account balance, send money, top up airtime Open an account, download your statement and many more Do you want to meet Leo? It's easy. You just save his number 667-999919 and you're good to bank from home guys. Join UBA, the leading digital bank. So far, it's been an interesting exchange. Beautiful woman, feisty, determined, with a beautiful smile. Now, your energy is just, <laughs> whew, it's catching me. Okay, thank you. I'm sure behind this strong woman, you've had your own fair challenges. Which have those been? Which have been the most difficult moments for you coming through? Well, I have them every day. As an entrepreneur, first in Cameroon, you have everyday challenges, yeah. <laughs> like all of us. And then as a woman in my uh, industry, it's been very hard because you, you, there is a lot of, uh, you know, confidence is very difficult to build, not because you're not competent, but mm -hmm. because you're a woman doing things that people are not waiting for you to yeah. do. So they don't trust you at first sight or uh, in the first encounter. So we, we, there's a hard work building this confidence mm -hmm. and trust. But I believe that people know uh, what I've been doing because I've been doing it for some time now, so it's okay. But the challenges are there. So the way for me to not to stop, it's to be, I like what I do and I believe it's a real mission. I have to convince people that they need to change the way they live yeah. because uh, maybe it's because I'm a mother and I know that if we don't change that in five or ten years we're we're going to suffer a lot of challenges so this passion for doing for going into a mission I think just holds me keeps me awake mm -hmm. and keeps me fighting because I, it's a noble cause you know it's something I have to do you have to do. I, sh I should not give up before I was building big infrastructures I did uh, big roads 
I built the, way, the Douala Bonanjo Way Interchange. Oh, this God. is a great job. But it was not the same, you know, fulfillment because I... The impact I, probably the, is yes, not the I same. Yes, I don't feel the impact myself. Yes. People say, oh, it's a nice, it's nice, road, nice road, it's a, a wonderful. But if you do something which is in housing, affordable housing, and you change people's lives, you know, in the last... There's week. some form of self-satisfaction exactly. within and that, this is improving people's lives. It, yes, and this is what keeps me awake because I feel there's something to do and people don't believe and I know that uh, I have to change their mind. So yeah. it's a mission and I have to do it. So I can't give up. If you had to go back in time, is there anything, are there things that you could have done differently? Maybe found my company a little bit earlier okay. because um, um, as a scientific person, I know the consequences of this climate change and there are a lot of they, people don't understand it. And I can see clearly what is happening and I'm afraid for my children. And I'm saying like, I know that they will suffer things that we, we haven't suffered. We have not experienced. No, yes. They will and, and the whole. So I was like, um, am I right to have children if I do nothing mm -hmm. to help? Maybe my action, my, lon my lonely action will not help them, but I need to do something. So my question was, is it normal to, to, to be, to have children and do nothing, even if we know that things, bad things are going, are to, going happen. to happen? To them, so yeah. if I was so to change something, maybe I would have gone earlier in the company and in the advocacy part, because I, I, I'm, I'm a bit old to do advocacy, it's tiring, but I won't give up. If I did that like 15 years before, I think it would have been better. Well, you don't <laughs> look it, so don't say you're old. Some of us. <laughs> Let me not go there because women always have this debate about yes, what they look like. <laughs> yeah, but that it, it must be challenging to look so good, try to keep up healthy, run a business where you probably have to work really late nights, take always care of your family. Night. How do you find the right balance? How mm. do you stay sane? How do you stay yourself? Yeah. Well, this, I, this is a, women, a question for women because men also have to find their balance, but no one asks them how to find their balance. Yes. Sometimes we're selfish. <laughs> yes, they are selfish. Yeah, we, we are not selfish. <laughs> so my balance, um, I, I've always been a disciplined person. Yes. That's just, to be honest, I've always been since I'm a child. That's why I was called Margaret Thatcher. Because when I say I start something, I will stick to it, uh, trying to be perfect in yes. what I do. So when I started exercising at gym, five or six years ago, I was, I have to be perfect at it. Like I was training, like I was becoming a, I would go in a, you know, amateur championship. Yes. So I stick to it. Uh, regarding the way I eat, I would stick to it. Like you have, I discipline, so I would eat normal. Mm -hmm. I can binge, but I will come back on track the next day. So this is my discipline. And for kids, uh, the same way I am a hardworking person. I try to, so, from the beginning, I gave them, uh, you know, a kind of routine. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not a, like a mom who says you have to do. No, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I, I let them do because I believe that freedom is important because you can express yourself. So I let them free, but I, I give a lot of guidance, and that's why my daughter is also studying to become an engineer because, uh, well, I never force her, but yeah. she feels that this is how what she has to do, mm -hmm. and she's doing it. And you know, if you there's like a, there's a lifestyle. So I take the same thing we had when I was a I was a child. Mm -hmm. There was a lifestyle style of perfectionist. You have to try your best, and this is what I just teach to my children. And of course, I had a lot of help uh, from uh, at home, working from people working with me, and from my mom when I had to travel or not to be there or whatever, she would come and help me. And I think my husband as a comprehensive person, because he's also an engineer, he's also a civil engineer, so of course he knows what he, it takes he to, exactly, and uh, we work together for some time, so he wouldn't be the one to say, oh, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. Um, I think he let me uh, do also do what I want. So I would say it's very important to be surrounded by people who accept you the way you are and I understand. Yeah. So I would say to young ladies, just choose your husband because you have to choose the one who goes in line with your objectives, yes. who matches your objectives. So if you have someone who say you shouldn't go out, you shouldn't, well, I mean, if you get married to him, it, it will be like... It limits you. Yes, yes, so you have to, I'm not saying that this is better than other, I'm not giving lessons or whatever, but I have had a husband who was very understand, well, who understood what I was doing. Mm -hmm. My mom and my family was uh, there and, um, well, uh, maybe it's for, I'm fortunate for the kids, but uh, I never ask myself, how do you balance it? I yeah. just do 
the way I feel, uh, if I'm fine. What you feel in your heart. Yes, right. if you're fine, the one around you will be fine. And even if you're not always there, kids will, you, you think you are not there, but if you make it right, kids say, no, 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 it's okay, we are fine like that. Okay. We also have our freedom, and then when you are there, you are there. And then we have this, and it's the most important <laughs> item. You sound like a very happy woman, and in our environment, especially the African environment, it's difficult to find women who express how happy and accomplished they seem. What advice would you give to young women at this point? I would say I'm accomplished because I, there are so many things I would like to do. There are so many things I would like to change in my life. But I'm not like a, I'm a positive person. Yeah. You know, I can be down. I will be down like everyone. I will cry because uh, women cry. But uh, after I will find a positive thing to cling on and I will cling on it and I will go. You know, I am down, but I, I still go because I feel I have to do my best. If yeah. This is the, the way I was educated mm -hmm. always, even if it's the end, if you're not dead, it's not the end. Yeah. So you still have to fight. And I, I believe it's education. And that's why we have to, to work with young girls from the beginning to say that well, it's in your, 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 you know, it's important for you to to feel okay, to feel happy with what you are doing. Because if you do, if you also, you can fight all the fights mm -hmm. you, you you will encounter. And it's about education, I think. And um, trust yourself, be positive, and never, uh, never quit. If you never quit and you have an objective, then even if you're down, you wake up and you still walk. Thank you, Justine, <laughs> for sharing such amazing words of encouragement. Never feel low enough to stay low. So always pick yourself up, be positive, and fight for what you deserve. Those are the key things we have learned today. Now stay connected to us. This has been Amazing Woman, Femme d'Exception. Offert par UBA, Africa's Global Bank.